note to self, I really got to go ahead and invest in my little camera holder in the car. But I did want to capture this moment. I am actually on my way to go get my COVID vaccination. My husband was able to get his before me. He's not fully vaccinated because of his work designation. And uh, I just found it very ironic that I was too young or too healthy to be able to go and get it. And I very much wanted to get it. Um, I wouldn't I wouldn't have wanted to jump in front of the elders uh, and those who were more prone to uh, contracting this virus, but I, I really <laughs> would have liked to have gotten it along with the teachers and other folks too, but nevertheless, all the more, um, I am now officially eligible in my state to go ahead and get this vaccine. So, um, it was really kind of funny because I was like, okay, as soon as we found out, I was like, okay, give it a day because I know how my systems work in my state. So, when I did find a spot, I was uh, very thankful. I was actually able to find one at a church that I uh, used to attend and so I'm headed over there right now so it makes me feel good to know it's some place that I'm familiar with um, I'm not sure why that was such a big deal to me but I guess because you know knowing knowing this the heck? somebody just threw trash out of their car and they put it in such a way that I now am going to have to maneuver to get around it in an uncomfortable way or risk getting it caught under my that is so yo that is so gross wow man why would you do that we're literally passing by a gas station where there's a mcdonald's and whatnot and they just threw their trash out on the street oh anyway um see if i was a different kind of person i'd go ahead and grab that license plate but i'm focused focused i'm on i'm on mission Oh, that's just gross. Okay, I think I got a minute or two. So I have an appointment time, and I wanted to make sure I got here very close to that appointment time uh, because I wasn't sure if this was going to be a drive through or if this was going to be I have to get up and walk in. And in pulling up, it looks like we're having to walk in for this one, even though it's a mobile unit. So um, I grabbed my mask. I've actually got a double mask situation. I'll probably go ahead and do today, mostly because I just don't want to show that paper mask. I'd rather show my other mask going in. Um, and so I'll probably double mask, go ahead and go in. Um, i got four minutes to my appointment and I just gotta walk across the parking lot, so. Well, I got that done. <laughs> that wasn't bad at all. Um, once I got in there, it was uh, really well laid out in the auditorium of the church and uh, everybody was behaving, everybody had their mask on and um, everybody, <laughs> the outreach team at this church is actually phenomenal, they've always been phenomenal and uh, and so everybody was really upbeat, they had so much paper to throw at you so you could have all the information you wanted to have, fortunately I did my research before I came in and um, so it was one little sheet that you had to fill out um, and then you, uh, they had a process where they were stepping everybody through kind of like an assembly line. It was great. Um, there was plenty of seating for those who needed it. And um, I didn't have to wait very long at all. They, when they said just a, just a minute or so, they really meant just a minute or so. Uh, so they got me uh, from going in to coming out um, and my 15 minute wait. Uh, my appointment was at 1040 and I finished by 11. So that's not bad at all. Uh, I, I am very glad I went ahead and did this. I got the Pfizer. I'm very excited. That was what I wanted. I wasn't going to complain either way, but I got the Pfizer. So I am now COVID compliant. Well, first half. First half done. Yay. Got my card. So now it's time to get on by my Saturday. I got stuff to do, you know?
feelings. I just got my uh, first shot of the Pfizer vaccine and it's interesting for me to think about how I've been compartmentalizing my feelings over the last year and a piece. When um, all this stuff came down, I had plans like a lot of people did for 2020. Uh, that stuff being the whole Panera Bread. <laughs> and I'm not a person who likes to sit still. It's not even healthy for me to sit still. Um, I vibrate if I sit still for too long, not in the good way. And it's almost like I had to pretend like it wasn't possible at all to move about, to be able to set my mind to that place where I wasn't of a rebellious spirit and saying, you know, eh, if it's my time to go, it's my time to go, I'm gonna go out. And I did travel. Um, those who follow me on my YouTube channel, which, you know, loving that I'm getting some of y'all to subscribe now, instead of just taking the recommendation, that is full shade I'm throwing out there. Those of you who are relying on the recommendation, y'all are hurting those of us who are trying to monetize this free content we're providing for you. So please subscribe to that channel. Um, but those of you who have subscribed and who have watched and liked and commented and shared, you know that I did um, take an Amtrak trip over the summer of 2020. And I gotta be honest with you, the whole time I was a bit terrified because there was a whole Panera break going on. And the precautions that I had to take for that trip were tremendous. Um, I'm glad I did that trip. I would not trade that experience for the world. Um, but the whole time, it was kind of like a, anytime someone approached you, it's like, are you carrying something that could kill me? Um, <laughs> I had no vaccine. Um, I, was too, I knew I was gonna be too young and too healthy to be in the first groupings of people who could go ahead and get the vaccine. And so there was that whole you know, paranoia about the Panera Bread that whole time. And I shouldn't pick on Panera Bread like that. Y'all know what I mean, speaking in code. But uh, the feeling I have right now that I'm processing, that I'm like, okay, the risk goes down a lot of me contracting and having a, an unbeatable time with this virus are going to go down. They've already gone down because I did my first shot today, but they're gonna go down again, measurably, in about three weeks and 14 days. <laughs> um, I feel like I can start to let myself dream about getting back out in the world and it won't be the same. I think that's the thing that some people are still trying to reconcile. Um, some people think it's gonna be the same, we'll be able to just go ahead and we're gonna have to think about it. It's gonna be the same. <clears throat> I mean, it's not gonna be the same, sorry. It's going to be changed, it's already changed and there's no going back, it's kinda of like there was a world before 9-11, and then there was a world after 9-11. And as a person who lived in Manhattan before 9-11, who has been back since 9-11, it will never be the same. It will never be the same for those of us who knew New York before. Um, and that's the way I feel about this situation right now. It's going to be standard for us to carry masks. Might as well go ahead and F it up because I'm not going to be unfashionable with it. I'll tell you that. <laughs> so I'm going to look at the opportunity at it. This is no different than carrying an umbrella in the case of rain. Um, you could choose not to do it and get wet <laughs> or you can choose to bring it and, you know, keep your look together. So if you are impaired with your vision, you can choose not to wear your glasses, but then if you crash into somebody and your driver's license says you should have had on some spectacles, there's gonna be some consequences to it. So it's changed. We need to start processing that. But y'all, I haven't seen my parents. <laughs> I haven't hugged my mother and my father since July. <laughs> and even when we did that, we took a risk. Um, it was a very low risk, but we did take a risk. Um, and I'm really ready to see my people. <laughs> I'm really ready to be able to see them without feeling that I am unduly putting them in danger. That is a great feeling. Oh, man. Um, one of the things that was really a blessing for my family was that 
in December of 2019 and early January of 2020, um, we were actually traveling overseas. And so we had a chance to spend some weeks together, both in the summer of 2019 and then also again in the um, new year of 2020, just before everything went crazy. And so um, I'm thankful that we were obedient to the leaning of the spirit and we went ahead and did that. Because it wasn't cheap. Two trips to Europe in the same year, essentially. That wasn't cheap. <laughs> but we got to spend that quality time because, you know, my parents live in Georgia, I live in Arkansas, and my brother is in Italy. <laughs> uh, so for me, the, the lesson in that was when the Spirit's telling you to go ahead and do something, like go and be with your people, figure it out. Go be with your people because you don't know. We had no idea we were not going to be able to see each other. Um, but now I'm so excited because my husband's fully vaccinated. I'm halfway there. My um, <clears throat> my brother and his family are fully vaccinated now. My parents are fully vaccinated, and a number of other people in my family. And they've all made these announcements on the public, so I'm not worried about telling their business. So um, I mean, we haven't been able to go home to see our Mississippi family in some time, and it was hard, y'all. And some of them are going to see this probably, but it was a hard call to make because. We don't live in the same bubbles. And of course you want to see your people. You don't like going long stretches without seeing them. Um, and, and seeing people on the on the, on the the FaceTime and all that kind of stuff and, and seeing, knowing that they don't want to push it, but it hurts. It hurts to say, not yet, but soon. We can say that now, not yet, but soon. And I'm thankful for that. I'm really thankful for that. Um, so for all of the healthcare professionals in and outside of my family, um, who I know have got to have a certain level of exhaustion at this point, if no one else tells you thank you, I'm going to say thank you. Um, for everybody uh, who, I mean, all these people who have trained and signed up and who are uh, processing these requests for these appointments and whatnot, I remember when I had to call, um, our process was, was great. We had an online um, registration process where you could go ahead and put your insurance information in, take care of that uh, while you were setting up your appointment before. Um, but I didn't get a call from them telling me that I had a confirmed time. But they'd given us a phone number to be able to call to you know check and see if you needed to cancel whatever, so I called. And when I picked up, I mean when she picked up, I could hear the exhaustion in this woman's voice. And I could tell that she had had some people who had not been very patient with her uh, during that day. I called about 3.30. And I just stopped for a moment. I was like, listen, <laughs> I'm good. You take a breath. I want to say I appreciate you. I know this is not easy. I appreciate you for helping me to confirm this. You are valued. <laughs> I just took a moment to go ahead and minister to this woman because you could tell, you could hear it in her voice. Um, the stress and whatnot. She was just saying, oh, thank you so much. We're processing each of us like a hundred of these requests a day, trying to get people scheduled to go ahead and do these vaccines. And um, I know what it's like to live in a, in a constant, high stress, <clears throat> fast paced turnover kind of position. Um, and when there, you can't even see the end in sight, it can, it can be very demoralizing. So we all need to think about that we're having these interactions with folks, um, whether they be doctors, nurses, um, you know, office staff, volunteers, whatever it is, we got to make sure we pause and, and show some grace to each other. Even when we're tired, even when we're frustrated, um, even when we don't feel like it, we've got to make sure that we are being kind to each other. Just period. We do. So... I guess I should stop rambling now, but I just, I just had to sit in it for a minute. I actually came out on a little patio and whatnot. I had to depollinate it. <laughs> Probably got to come back here and hose it down some more. But uh, I hope y'all are doing well. Um, this is no shaming for those who don't like the idea of going and getting vaccinated. Um, I think you should, but that's my opinion. You're entitled to yours. Uh, for those who are going ahead and doing that, thank you. It's helping to keep everybody else safe. Um, you know, get good information so you can make the best decision for you and your loved ones. 
Y'all have a good Saturday. I'm going to sit out here and enjoy this peace and quiet.